So the first two factors of samadhi, vitaka, vichara, um, which is uh, pointing the mind, pointing attention to a topic, vitaka. It's like pinning with a thought or just pinning your attention on a topic, a theme, a sensation, part of your body. And then vichara, handling it, sampling it, turning it over. What's the meaning of this? What's this about? What's the feeling of this? How's this? Rather like the fingers and the palm, you know, the vitaka is the finger pointing and then takes it back into the palm of the hand and you roll it around. The vitaka vichara, the finger, fingers and the palm of the hand. Really getting a feel for it, and uh, so these are just really helpful way to use the thinking mind, rather than just have it scribbling, like a finger scribbling in water. You know, it's something that points back and handles the material that you you bring to attention. <coughs> And uh, so this is essential just in terms of right thought and right recollection and just the all-round way in which we live our lives. You know, what's the meaning of this? What's the point of this? What's really happening? Mm. Keeping your house tidy. And literally, sometimes it's just that, looking around your belongings, what's helpful, what's useful, what's finished now, um, it's finished, throw it away, uh, literally you're, you're dwelling, what's happening in your life, what's point to it, what's useful now, what has to be encouraged, what has to be put aside, this is the, you say, the digging, this is putting the services in, like when you're building something up, first we have to dig the ground, clear the ground, dig in and put in the drainage and the <laughs> not very attractive stuff, the clearing, 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 before you really even uh, build meditation. You don't want to start meditation on the second, second story without a couple of stories beneath it, you know, just people trying to get calm and, you know, spacey and happy without doing the groundwork. Groundwork really is sila, and looking at sila in terms constantly, nikamma, what's what's useful, what's to be put away now, what's to be, and then what's to be encouraged, the right efforts, you might say, mm. four right efforts, what do we put aside, what do we remember to keep putting aside, what do we encourage, what do we pick up. And these will come up anyway when you sit quietly because all the unresolved, unfinished business tends to rise up and then you have to figure out is this just something that's superficial restlessness or something more meaningful. Generally if you keep putting it aside two or three times and it comes back and again and again it means oh well you better investigate this. What's, what's in this? Is it associated with regret, ill will, worry, anxiety? This is called, I call it deep attention. You really get to the gist of what any things, any topics are about. And even then, so you actually begin to give it a simple word and then steadying it, working with it breathing through it, what's helpful. So it's just the discursive you know, meditation that's just about digging the ground. Mm. And that is something you, you know, goes on because as you start to build your meditation then you're probably going to find there's little bits of ground need to be cleared you know, and it, 
much has been done already if you've got to this point in your life much has already been done so also to bear that in in mind everyone has unfinished business but much has been done then you begin to build on that so building is uh, again vitaka vichara so important to uh, build the body building the spinal axis the refrain is sitting under a tree spine upright legs folded bringing the breath to mind mindfulness to the fore so um, now obviously we do sit upright but do we really consciously connect to that if you're going to meditate you want to be very clear about that if it takes you you know 10 minutes every session just to build build your body up from the base of the spine the tail the sacrum the lumbar all the way up your spine doing that just as a regular practice like you do anything else in methodical setting it up um, and you know if you find yourself swamped with dullness sleepiness restlessness you go back to that again you set it up set it up because this upright axis is very helpful and I think absolutely necessary to dispel some of the grosser forms of the hindrances sleepiness and restlessness the two ways in which hindrances really hit the mind we just get torpid and dull and foggy or just jangling and buzzy restless and just just the grossest forms of it and again you can't really go any further in meditation until you at least deal with the gross elements of the hindrances building it up, building the body up from the spine so you can visualize if you're using your attention like a finger pointing down to the tail and how's that? is that really settled? is the lumbar region, is the pelvis really settled? something helps it settle more fully you can relax the muscles in the pelvic floor thighs, around the hips how is that? And drawing your attention up, sacrum, lumbar region, how is that? Just again, if you have uh, pictures of skeletons or anatomy, you have to visualize these large vertebral bones stacked on top of each other like a stack of plates. And you get the big one, the lumbar region, halt resting on top of the of the pelvis the pelvic girdle just inside the two wings of the pelvis how's that and how's the next bone sit on top of it is it placed and uh, you know drawing your attention upwards because we're sitting up as if there's like a plant or a tree growing out of your hips out of your pelvis sweeping up encouraging the lumbar muscles to draw in you know this gentle arch the lordosis in the lower back as if that part of your spine is inclining forwards and also upwards as you move up your spine connecting the spine to the breastbone center of the chest connecting the spine with awareness to the breastbone so that keeps drawing the spine in and when the spine is drawn in the shoulders rest back the chest opens up the abdomen opens without that the back and the front of the body seem to go in different ways the back curves back and the front front of the body curves in and you get the the uh, melting banana posture you know 
which is generally the front of the body tips over and then you've got the weight of your chest resting on your diaphragm so you can't, don't breathe properly, you don't get enough energy there and the chest contracts so there's very little energy coming through your, into your breathing. Well that's setting you up for sloth and torpor isn't it? Classic. If you want to get torpid, just do that for five minutes and you'll be there. <laughs> want to get into obsessive thinking just do that for a few minutes you'll get there <laughs> let the head come rolling over <laughs> that's the way it goes isn't it yeah and no matter what you you know try and figure out if you don't get your spine right you're setting up a basis for those kinds of hindrances it's not a personal thing it's just the structural thing to do with energy the human body know the human body and this, I think, to my mind, this has to be emphasised because so much of the time you're sitting in chairs and cars and things like that, your spine becomes inactive. There's no strength in it, no awareness in it, and we just, it loses it. Yeah. Imagine a situation is summoners in the time of the Buddha weren't in chairs. You, know, you never had a chair when you were a little girl, a little boy. There weren't such things. Your basic, your spine <laughs> grew straight and strong. So we just have to, in my opinion, make something out of it. So all the sense organs clustered on the front of the body and everything to deal with what we're facing and what's coming to us Naturally, all your attention is going forward. So bringing it back, drawing the lower spine, finding out where does the ribs start, and then between the shoulders again, making a special act of attention to connect the spine between the shoulder blades, connect that to the chest, the breastbone. So this is, the breastbone acts as a kind of a target or an aim. And you want to aim your spine towards that. As if it's connected to it with a rubber band. And that's going to help your shoulders to pull in and that chest opens up. Further up the spine, you're feeling the vertebrae where the neck which is, again, the spine, isn't it? Uh, we tend to think it's almost separate, but it's part of the spine connecting to the head. And again, this is uh, where we're congenitally, our heads leave our bodies, you know, somatically anyway. Because all the time you're bending over, looking at something, reading, watching a screen, and uh, the eyes pull the head forward pulled and over, you've got something in your hand, your head is tipped over onto it. So you have to make a special act of attention to pull the face back, as if the face is kind of being gently pushed back into the bones of the head, tilt the chin just slightly down, lengthening up the back of the neck into the cranium, Really feeling the head, not so much a face, but primarily it's this big box of bone. And you want to have that box of bone balanced on the neck, top of the neck bones. Let your face disappear, relax, it doesn't matter. You, know, if you lengthen and you bring your attention up your spine through the neck as if the spine is rising up like a finger or like a flagpole pointing up to the sky above your cranium, above your crown and your chin just tilts slightly over and the neck muscles start to lengthen so these areas, the neck muscles tend to be tightened because our shoulders are often tightened up with physical effort or compression 
So, so helpful just to open the chest, drop the shoulders and lengthen the neck muscles. And you'll find a lot more energy moves into your head that way. You don't get so foggy. So this upright axis, something to deliberately build. And whether you're sitting, standing or walking, it's there. You don't have to, to forget it when you walk. Walking is just carrying the spine along a track. You can keep that same uprightness when you're walking, letting the legs swing from side to side, uh, let the pelvis turn as you walk, let the shoulders turn as you walk, so you get the feeling of just this upright form moving through, moving along a track. And then standing, same thing. Standing also helpful because it takes the pressure off the lumbar region. So the discs get a bit, and the lumbar region get a bit of release from the pressure of the body and connecting down to the feet. So you carry that upright sense all the way down from your tail down to the center of the foot, feet, balance. And uh, do it point at a time. Vitaka, pointing to it. And Vichara, handling it, feeling it. And probably for most people, the back has problems in it. Pains, stiffness. And uh, so something like going to the points and then widening your attention if you're spreading awareness through the whole form across the back from the shoulder to shoulder up and down the back as if you're very slowly scanning up and down your back slowly scanning across your back and following the breathing this definitely helps to um, bring some balance to the to the body bodily form you do that and you're being aware looking out for those places where one can relax a muscle perhaps in your neck perhaps in your arm perhaps where your arm joins your body at the top of the chest So all these strapping muscles, anywhere you can spread your awareness, breathing through, relaxing. So you're building the body up, first of all, the fundamental structure, and then making that structure more comfortable and settled. So you're giving the mind a place to, to, to live in. <clears throat> It's a little bit deeper than just the body scan or a little bit more um, felt than the recollection of the parts of the body. As if you're almost living under the skin and probing how the body holds itself together and what's needed and what's not needed. Whatever's not needed, can you switch it off? whether that's in your thumbs or your cheeks. Because anywhere where the body is holding will affect the whole form. Any part of your upper body that you're not, doesn't have any, you can't feel, that is going to also be an obstruction. So if you find you know, that you're not really aware of the area under your throat, and start bringing attention there from the places you are aware and moving through. So all this helps to establish a proper uh, form for the breathing to be felt through. And it can 
with practice it can be you can feel the effect of the breathing not just as a diaphragm thing or a nose thing but something that infuses suffuses the body and not just as something that we're attentive to but something we're appreciating the involuntary the um, easeful it's like something infusing and brightening, clearing the body. When you're building that, you can, you can, you know, sometimes help having your eyes open. There's nothing wrong with having your eyes open. In fact, it does sometimes help to establish where you are because the mind will tend to swing and sway and so if you have your eyes open downcast you know you've got it's almost like giving yourself another um, prop to lean on you're in this particular point this particular space not in some fuzzy swirling world of thoughts and impressions, not in a numb space, but somewhere you can even use your eyes to to sharpen attention. You can sharpen it, you know, so the eyes are obviously primary organs for attention. So if you have your eyes open, you can soften, and then you can sharpen your gaze and ha- that will have an effect on the quality of attention that your mind is operating through. If you find you're not really getting much direct feeling, then place your hands on your thighs, palms down, so you get, oh, that's, a, that's definitely, hands are the primary organs of physical sensation. So you find it difficult to get physical sensation. Use your hands a little more fully. Hands can just go very limp and uh, be redundant, but you want to actually use them. So the eyes are great for sharpening attention. Hands are very good for deepening receptivity. You really get to feel sensations through your hands. So having your hands fingers and palms down on your thighs, you'll, you will, by that, almost listening or feeling through your hands, oh, this is what physical sensation is, warmth, tingling. You pick it up through your hands, you're probably going to get much more of that quality of receptive clarity coming into the mind also. Then you can also use the classic hand mudra where one hand is resting inside the other. This is quite, you get both then, you get the sensations, the tactile sensation, also with the thumbs are just lightly touching, you get precision. It's not no pressure, but you get the thumb tips lightly touching, you get the sense of precision, sharpness. And that has an effect on the mind. You're feeling really drowsy, bring your hands out and touch each fingertip with the opposite fingertip. So the hand becomes like a basket. And that is also useful because there's no, it's not a gripping pressure, it's not willful struggling, but it's a using acuity of the fingertips, there's that sensation. The fingertips and the thumb tips are very, very acute. So again, it helps to give us another support for cultivating these qualities of attention. That is the pointing, sharpening of the mind, awareness, receptivity, picking up, 
sensations and learning to read as if you're moving from um, you know reading books and ideas into braille you're really reading things through the through the body rather than through the uh, conceptual apparatus so these are ways in which you can build it up building up a felt body and whatever you don't need to do put it aside you know, including aspects of the techniques if you don't need it put it aside when the mind is kind of numb or inert you need to pick something up clarify pick pick up one of these skillful means and keep working with it give it 5, 10, 15 minutes of just okay this just like you're learning to chant you repeat it again and again patiently, steadily this is this quality of steady careful sensitive effort is the right kind of effort for meditation when the body is ready it will start to receive the breathing more fully so my suggestion is to build the body first of all when it becomes more complete and settled and open you'll notice the breathing you won't have to struggle for it it will become more evident because that is the guiding uh, master of the body is breathing it will start to speak it will start to come through then you just pick up the rhythm of it the flow of it what it really is as a felt bodily experience <laughs>